Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on Informatica MDM. In today's tutorial, we are going to see very important facts about Informatica MDM. Facts related to how to monitor the progress of more job. The facts about how to implement a data model which is already present. For example, if you have the data warehouse data model, if you want to import in MDM, how can we do that? The facts related to, to other as aspects of the MDM, such as what is database schema length limits? What are the changes you can control through the MDM hub? And what is the underlying impact? The fact about the GBID, what is the GBID, etc. So we are going to see the various aspects. So we know that the current screen, what you are able to see, it is a informatic MDM hub. We have created a couple of tables, for example, base object party. It has maybe some columns and it has the match column and match rule set, etc. Then we go to the, the batch viewer to execute a job. As a you selected you loaded the data you got like few millions of record and now you're executing the merge job match and merge job so something like that so once you select that match and merge job you have to select the match it and execute the job assume that you have the high volume of record for matching and merging it will take a long time so how to monitor that is any sql present yes so those are the things we are going to see in today's tutorial. So let's start our today's tutorial on about interesting facts about Informatica MDM. The very first fact is how to track the progress of a merge job in MDM. It's very important uh, when you give a production support for MDM project you have to continuously monitor the jobs state job load job match job and merge job out of all these jobs the match and merge job is very critical and it's little tricky to monitor compared to other jobs now in order to monitor this merge job we have to run a query which checks the progress of the job and also to determine the count of records that have been processed when merge job is run on the large set of record. How the query looks like? You can get the count of the record of merge process by by executing this query. Select count star as number record process from t dollar b party j g m d. This is very important temporary table which keeps the track of the merge process. Also, we we know there is additional table called as a history merge that is HMRG. So we have to use these two tables to check how many records are getting processed. We have to use the join on source ready object of JGMD table and the source ready object of the history merge table. We also have to apply the additional join on row ID object of JGMD table and the target row ID object of the history merge table. And the third join we need is row ID match rule from the both the tables. This will give us the count of number of records processed. Replace T dollar B party JGMD according with the base object that you are running on the name naming convention of the t dollar is always constant as t dollar base object name jgmd so this is the name which is a which is a very temporary table uh, which is a temporary table get created and dropped during the merge process it is created during the start of merge process and dropped at the end of the merge process so this will be helpful to check how many records are getting successfully merged in the batch of the merge process. 
the next fact is how to convert a logical data model into a base object in MDM. If you are doing the requirement gathering, this is a very basic question asked by business. They might have the existing implementation of the other projects such as data warehouse or any other MDM implementation. So that means they have the logical database model or uh, logical data model. The question they will ask is, can you use that? Can we leverage the data model uh, and implement in MDM Hub? The question, uh, even it looks simple, but the answer is little uh, complicated. The reason is, of course, we have the provision to use the existing logical data model and create the base object data model. But the problem is, it's a little complicated. So you have to handle the several cases. So I am I'm giving here one one of the case how to use the log how to convert the logical data model into the base object model in MDM. In master data management, there is an option to import from common warehouse data model that is CWM file. Do you want to know what is CWM file? Just wait for a moment because in the next slide we are going to see that file how it looks like so this common warehouse data model meta meta model we can use to import in mdm this cwm that is common warehouse meta model file is the industry opted standard which defines the meta data model for the relational and non-relational databases in data warehouse environment cwm file is imported as a physical table in MDM. Now how to do that? To create the base object in MDM, it is required to first convert the SQL definition in the CWM file format. Then import it in MDM using import from CWM file option. The common warehouse meta model defines a specification for modeling metadata for relational and non-relational also for multi-dimensional and most other objects found in the data warehousing environment. So the answer to question whether can we use the logical data model and import in MDM, the answer is yes, but it is a bit complicated. So I would recommend rather than importing those data model, design your own data model in MDM and create the base objects accordingly. Now let's see what is this CWM file looks like. The file is very simple. It has a, it is XML file, so you can open in any notepad, any text editor such as Notepad or Notepad++. You'll see the very first line as a version, it with the UTF-8 as an encoding, the XML version. Then it will give us, it will has the the table name, uh, the uh, namespace as a CWMRDB and it is pointing to a unique name that is org omg cwm 1.0 relational and then the actual content will start the content start with the header it has uh, some header information like meta integration model bridge some version and this uh, xmi name and then content will start the so content is the actual model of your uh, tables in your mdm so it will have the other contents also. This file is quite big, but this is the structure you will see in this CWM file, which can be used to import and create convert logical data model into MDM base object model. Let's discuss about the length restriction for table name and column name. Of course, you might be designing a data model. You need to design the table name. You need to design the column name. There is a couple of things you need to consider for length of table and column. In MDM, the maximum length allowed for physical name of base object is 24. This includes the mandatory prefix C underscore of two characters. Therefore, user can add only 22 characters for the complete physical name of base object. Why this C underscore required? The C underscore is get replaced with a T dollar and the corresponding temporary table get created. So C underscore is mandatory when you create the base any tables in MDM like C underscore landing, C underscore staging, C underscore base object, etc. 
C underscore is very important because internally MDM process created creates several temporary tables by replacing C underscore and adds T dollar sign. So the actual length you can add is 22 character for table name. The maximum length allowed for the physical name of the column is 26 character. There is no prepecus column name so you can use the full 26 length. The Oracle database level the restriction is the 33 characters but we add the we create the so many additional tables like CBO, party, XREP or history merge or hist. So the actual length exceeds than the 24 character for the table name. So that's the reason it is uh, even it is the 33 or 35 in the Oracle database level it get reduced because of this additional temporary table get, will be get created so that reduction will happen and the actual length will be the 24 which include the C underscore how to verify consolidation process works correct or not means you run the batch and merge job but you have to sure whether the job is running properly or not you can execute this query and check where your consolidation process is working fine. Consolidation process means there are four uh, basic conventions. So how the consolidation happen? New record is get created with consolidation indicator four. And when you merge those record, one of the record will be survived. But how the record will be survived is based on the four rules. Very first rule is which is the record from highest trust will have the highest priority so that means the trust will come into the picture as a first then it will check if the trust is sent then it will check the source last updated if the source last update is also same that means source system same or the trust is same last update is same then it will check for the the next thing that is nothing but the raw ID object of the ba uh, base table if the record with the raw ID object if the two records are there from this with the same terrace with the same last update date and one of them have the higher raw ID object the second one has the low then highest raw ID object will survive if the, that is also not the case if the raw ID object is the same then the raw ID extra will be considered for survivorship so how to tackle or how to check whether the consolidation process is working fine or not for that we can create a simple query for example you have the party table like CB party and uh, you have to also consider the XRF. Run this query by selecting party name from the base table, party name from the XRF, XRF priority object, XRF original priority object, XRF priority system, source last updated from the XRF, priority XRF and last updated. Do the rank over the and do the partition by the priority object, order by the priority system descending that is the source uh, last updated descending cast the original raw ID object as a decimal and cast the raw ID extra as a decimal as a descending and you got the rank one and by this process you will see the which record has the word the rank the highest the rank like one two three will be the rank the rank one will be the surviving record so and you will compare the values and will conclude that whether the match process is working fine or not or the merge process is working fine or not matching techniques informatica internally implemented various techniques to execute match and merge so that's the reason we create um, match columns we create match rules if you want to see the other details about the how the actual match process happen you can refer the video here but match techniques here what are i mentioned are these are the techniques which can be used or which are leveraged to implement the matching of the multiple records. The techniques available are deterministic, probabilistic, heuristic, phonetic, linguistic, empirical. So these are the techniques can be used with their themselves or the combination of them for matching the record. What is the recommendation for GBID? That is global ID. Global ID column must be an integer, char, var char, n char, or n var char column type. You cannot use like blob, clob for the global ID. 
a non integer column must be exactly 255 character in length so so your column should be 255 character and that is the restriction you should not use c law b law column and you should not use any other length than 255 is there any limitation for match column length oh this is a very interesting question might be get asked in interview there is a limit for the match column length to promote a change list to an empty operational reference store the match column length that the mdm hub adds to external match input table must not exceed 4000 the match column length is the sum of length of all base object column that are sourced of the match column and number of source columns the change list promotion fails with the following error if the total length of match column greater than 4000 and the error looks like this specified length too long for the data type ibm ilog chart ibm ilog chart it is effective from mdm version 10.1 ilog charts are not supported for the new customers or existing customer who previously licensed IBM iLog chart software. This is just an information. So these are the few of the facts about the Informatica MDM. I hope you are enjoying the MDM tutorials. If you have any questions or queries, you can definitely mention in the comment section of this video. Thank you again for watching this video. Have a nice time.